Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Uh, this is Mark Wiggins uh, from from the Norwood uh, Owners Group, as well as Matt Furnow. And um, we just like to say, hey, and um, we, we have a great opportunity to uh, interview um, the CEO of, of Norwood Sawmills, Ashlyn, and um, the uh, business specialist, I think, is the title. Uh, he'll have to correct me there if I'm if I'm wrong. But uh, there's Brian, and uh, we'd like to welcome them to uh, a, a quick chat, hopefully, uh, about some new and upcoming things, as well as some some problems that, uh, that we want to address and get uh, some some clarity with the uh, owners group here. And um, uh, I'd just like to welcome everybody. Matt, uh, I think you've got a few words to say as well, right? Yeah, absolutely. So, hey, uh, I'm Matt Fearnow. I'm the uh, one of the admins and started the Nor Norwood or Owners Group a few years ago, and just a way for Norwood Sawwood Sawmill folks to be able to to get together and chat about Norwood. So, here today we have Ashlyn and Brian. So, Ashlyn and Brian, there's been some some great news that came about recently. Can you uh, can you guys elaborate on that? Yeah, absolutely. Firstly, thanks for uh, taking the time to chat with us, both of you, Matt and Mark. So it's uh, fun to get FaceTime with some of our customers and our owners. So thank you very much. Um, yes, we've got some interesting, kind of exciting news. Um, I guess the first one we want to touch on is, as you know, our flagship sawmill is the Lumber Pro HD 36. And we're about to release, or we are releasing, a version two of V2, HD36 V2. Um, so we're kind of excited about that. Uh, from a functional perspective, um, the biggest uh, change is the board width will be going from 28 inches to 31 inches on the new V2. So for people looking for a slightly wider board, that's kind of exciting. From a structural perspective on that, um, the I guess one of the most notable changes is the bed rail. We're moving to what we call the Dura deck. It's a new patented design we have for the log deck. It's made out of uh, we roll form steel. It's got a really slick looking um, shape to it, and uh, it does. Uh, it's strong, but it does allow us. Uh, good flexibility in the future for, for upcoming stuff. But the really, really interesting part is all of our existing attachments continue to work with that Jura deck um, model. It's a, it's a, it's quite a, a new way of doing things. Roll forming is not for the faint of heart. The tooling for it alone spans, I don't know, 30 or 40 feet uh, or, or maybe more. It's quite, quite something. So we're really pleased to be able to offer that. Uh, the other thing that you would note from a structural perspective is the guards. We've got to have a new style of guards on those that are sort of that newer look to them with steel inserts. And then on the guard itself, the guard structure will be a sawdust. Uh, the sawdust chute is um, like a, compatible with sawdust collectors so that you can connect on the um you, you know, the sawdust vacuum system. So pretty people who are milling indoors, it, that's really where that comes into play. If you're outdoors, it's not so much of an issue, but indoors people really want to be able to put on a, an extractor. Um, so yeah, that's it's, um, it looks like from a, oh, otherwise it, it's still the HD 36, you know, the, the everything else is the same. Are the guards going to be very similar to the, um lm29 v2 guards is that is that the style that you're going to there yeah, okay that so that the yeah. the metal inserts that you've got on that and then that the way that the port kind of kicks out uh, the four inch okay. port um yeah. for for air handlers things like that that's great that's good news yeah yeah looks great yeah i didn't know uh no so that's it on the hd36 the really cool thing is um this is the one that people have been asking for, is uh, we're bringing out the, what we call the Lumbermax HD38. And this thing is, kicks ass. So it is, uh, as you can tell, 38, handles a 38 inch log. So another two inches over and above the 36. Um, from a 
board width perspective though really blows the doors off it can handle it can cut up to 35 inch wide slab so even bigger capacity there and then we move to a different a more advanced saw head something we've just patented as well a new patent invention called the omega saw head and it will uh, allow you to cut up to 14 inches deep so a really big deep cut the oh, wow. 36 around wow. nine inches give or take maybe nine or ten or something like that so that extra capacity will open uh, quite a few doors for a number of people yeah that that deep throw capacity is really going to be popular with timber framers like Essentially, you could take a 24 inch beam and split it into four 12 by 12s, you know, something you couldn't do with a 36, um, you know, and that slab capacity, I mean, 35 inches on a production mill is incredible. Like you're, you, you can cut tabletops in one pass. So, I mean, that's, that's yeah. pretty awesome. Guys are going to love that with the live edge still being so popular. Right. And so it's a 35 inch slab. You're, you're handling a 38 inch log right is that uh, that's what the 38 is for right, right? <clears throat> and then yeah. and then a 14 inch depth cut um for for timbering so that's uh i, I guess you know your target on that one right uh, the the timber framers and things like that they're really going to go after that that's good news for sure yeah some guys that specialize in quarter sawn are going to appreciate that deeper throat also yeah for sure and that's always a challenge right when you're trying to cut up the logs and get them corner sawed yep for sure. So when is that going to be available? We're looking at uh, shipping probably May, end of May, maybe earlier, but end of May. Um, okay. And, for both uh, or is that just the HD38? Sorry, say that again? Is that for both of those, the HD36 V2? The HD36 V2, actually, we've already started to ship it just the last oh, nice. couple days last week. It's already on the road. Um, and we'll be landing in people's driveways uh, uh, probably at the end of this week or next week. I, so I was just going to say on that 38, what what's the the price tag on that, right? Yeah, so it's uh, regularly, um, and right now it's equipped with a 23 horsepower the V-twin, the same one that's on the HD36 and HD36 V2. And we're looking at 12,600 for the 38. Um, we're going to be offering it for 11,690 11, up until the end of June anyways. Um, oh, okay. So, yeah. And the other- so Can they order that now? They can order it now. We'll be, well, we'll be starting to take orders for that this week. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah, it's been you know, top secret. The the really uh, so in terms of structure, it's going to be on the same Jura deck, the new Jura deck log deck that the HD thirty six V two is is moving to. So the thirty eight and the thirty six will will share the same Jura deck log deck. And then um, from an attachments perspective, the HD thirty eight will accept virtually all of the same galaxy of hydraulic and power and manual attachments that the HD36 and 36V2 accept. Uh, there's a couple little exceptions, but otherwise the, the, the whole big wide ability to customize is going to be available on the 38. Um, so, and that's really in keeping with our philosophy that people should be able to get a really awesome mill with their funds that they have, and then they can grow it over time and as their salt milling needs grow. Uh, the, the, I guess the only other thing I should probably touch on, it is considerably taller. I mean, it's getting, it's certainly well outside my reach to handle, to get to the crank. So we have outfitted with the next generation power up down. Uh, so there won't be a manual up down function on it. Uh, that you are accustomed to on all of the Norwoods. It's uh, automatically out of the gate with the power up down. Mm -hmm. And it is the next generation of that. So, Does that automatically yeah, sequence down when you go up and down or are you going to have to look at the gauge? It's it's still looking at the gauge. It's not a, it's not a computerized set work. It's just instead of cranking the handle, you've got a toggle switch for going up and down. And, and you can control the speed of it too, so that it, you know if you're if you're going the full from bottom to top, you can have it going as fast as you want. And 
And then uh, as you're adjusting to hit your marks, you can slow it down so you can hit your marks and cut precisely. Ah, that's great. Mm -hmm. um, you, you just mentioned a minute ago, and, and this just kind of came to mind, but you said the deck on the 36 and the deck on the 38 are the same decks. Is it is it to yeah. the V1 as well? Of, so all three of those sawmills are going to have the same deck? Well, the V1 won't exist anymore. We're, we're switching to right. the V2. Right. But if, so I, owned a, if I owned a, a V1 and I wanted to go to the 38, would I just need a new head? It's likely with the difference between the two, if you had a 36 and you were wanting to upgrade to the 38, you would just sell your, like you would just upgrade to the new Yeah, model. right. Because sure, you would, sure, sure. You wouldn't want to just throw your old head out. I mean, it's still got lots of value <laughs> when you draft, so. Right, right, right. I just know there's always talk about upgrading and, and changing and, you know, uh, different things that you can do. And uh, there's always conversation in the group about, you know, hey, I, I, you know, can you do this? Can you do that? Can you add hydraulics to the, you know, like the LM30, uh, LM29? Um, did you... Did you mention anything about the um, um, the LM29 or any changes happening with that? Yeah, well, we've got uh, nothing from a functional perspective. So just by way of, of um, you know, reminders, so last year we brought out the V2 version of the LM29 and of the MN26. So both of them went to, to an, a V2 version, LM29 V2 and, and MN26 V2. Those mills are great mills, you know, nice, solid, tight, dis tightly designed mills, and uh, nothing wrong with them. One thing that we did change last year with them, but we didn't make a lot of fanfare about it, was that their capacities both did increase. So the LM29 V2 actually could handle and can handle a 30-inch diameter log, and the MN26 V2 could and continue, still can handle a 27-inch diameter log. For a variety of reasons, we didn't make the, the model number change last year, and we should have. Um, because, you know, as you know, our numbers actually mean something. The, the, the 20, 30 HD36, it's a 36 inch diameter log. Right. So, what we're doing this year is we are changing the model numbers on both of those so that going forward, the LM29 V2 will be known as the LM30 and the MN26 V2 will be known as the MN27. From a structural uh, perspective, they are absolutely identical mills. It's simply the badge that's going on the, on the guards. And it really just does keep everything consistent with the normal way of the numbers having some meaning. So, so that change yeah. has been so rolling out soon. And I, I got the LM29 V2 last year, kind of before a lot of the rush, I suppose. And uh, I've been extremely pleased with it. So thanks for the upgrades on that. I, I, I've heard some of the, you know, the, the older 29s and they, they wish they had been able to do this or do that. And I think you included those in the, in the V2. So I imagine you're doing that with the 36 and all of the, you know, asks along the way. So that's going to be good news. And then the 38, uh, certainly um, that's impressive. Um, so you said that you know they're coming available. You can the 36 is is available now, uh, and as is actually shipping. The 38s coming in May. Um, your new, I, I guess we should just call it a sticker change on the 29 and the 26, right? For the most part, no functional change there. Um, now, as you're doing this, are you are you um, you know any new specials, any new deals that uh, you want to reveal? Well, well, right now we're, we're we're holding our existing prices into May, the May fifteenth. Um, due to all the changes, I mean, the prices just have to go up on everything. So right now is the time to buy because as of May fifteenth, we'll be going to our twenty twenty one prices. Um, right. But from this point forward, too, right now we are selling just the HD thirty six V two, so we're no longer taking sales orders for a a, a version one. Very cool. Okay, so so right now is the time if you are interested in a 36 to go ahead and get the V2 for the V1 price, basically, is what you're saying. No, no, <laughs> no. Right now, we've, we've discontinued the the, 30, the the version one now. So from this okay. point forward, we're just we're taking new orders. For okay. The HD V2. Um, it's still at its limited time price offer, so you're still getting the the best price on it. 
but you're no longer okay. getting the, the V1. So now that we've unveiled the V2, we will be selling the V2. The, okay. what we're, because those, the HD36V2 and the HD38 are basically new models. They, they didn't exist before. So there is kind of no sure. price control. Right? But we're holding, what the pricing we're holding is uh, both the MN and the LM. We're holding the pricing for another little while. We should have put the prices up some time ago, but we've been holding out. And then all of the attachments pricing will be going up. We're holding the price on those for another short while, just to give people one last chance to get in at 2020 pricing. So there's a, you know, a lot of, a lot of, yeah, a lot of savings still to be had before we roll out 2021 pricing. So speaking of 2020, uh, maybe a, a little bit of a sore spot with some owners out there, if you will, but can you kind of address, you know, how COVID has affected your guys' business and how things are going for you and, and different things that are kind of going on right now? Absolutely. I mean, COVID's made us extremely busy. I mean, COVID has kept everyone home and Sonderling is one of those niche markets where you know, people decided with this newfound time that it's time to get a sawmill and and enjoy their land and get right. get busy doing some cutting and, and finally, you know, fulfilling that dream that they've been looking forward to owning a sawmill and actually getting one on order. So, um, so we've been extremely busy right from the start of the pandemic. So, it's um, it's been a little bit frustrating for some of our customers and some of our uh, future customers on getting through to us. Um, this is normally our busy time of year, and it is. Um, COVID's made it even busier. So, I mean, unfortunately, we can't answer all of the calls coming in at times. We're, we're receiving up to 6,000 calls per week. So it's a, wow. it's a phenomenal load. So, um, so we've worked really hard at doing everything we can. Um, we're expanding our business hours now. So, so we're starting to answer the phone at 8 a.m. and we're answering it to 8 p.m. Um, so we're just, you know, trying to be available for as long as guys, because guys want to get through, guys want to get their parts on order. Um, one thing we're asking are for you guys implementing, are, are you implementing different ways to get in touch with you other than the phone? I mean, are you, is there an internet presence or, or the Facebook page? I mean, is it, are any of those really options? Absolutely. As, as they always have been. So people have always contacted us through Facebook. Um, or right through our website. So you can email us at info at Um We try to get back to all of those emails within 24 to 48 hours. So that's what our company policy is, is to respond to those emails within that time, which, you know, if unfortunately for some people, they try to get through and they don't, they can't keep trying. So, so shoot us an email, let us know when the best time to get back to you is, and we'll do our best to do that. I, I know everyone's, a lot of people are very busy right now. So shoot us an email. Let us know when the best time is that we can get a hold of you. Um, our sales staff is is working their butts off to get to get back to everyone. And 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 you know what? Sometimes if you need to be reached outside of those hours, we'll get a salesman to reach outside of those hours. So so we're trying to be. And as I guess with them. I guess with the business that, that you've increased, you've certainly increased your staff and, and those kind of things as well. I know we see comments from time to time, like, how are you guys, you know, adaptively growing? And, and what does that look like as far as your organization? It sounds like you're you're making that work as well. Yeah, well, we've doubled, at least doubled, our sales and customer service team in the last six months or seven months. But with a call volume of of about 6,000 calls, inbound calls, that's not even the outbound calls per week. It's, I mean, it's overwhelming, as you can mm -hmm. imagine. It's, uh, we're getting crushed um, and we're doing our level best. So, um, so we're, we're, we're continuing to try to staff up quickly. Uh, we have um, a new e-commerce website that we'll be bringing out uh, launching this week actually and within that is going to be an upgraded online parts ordering portal which will allow people to be more self-sufficient so that they can easily order their parts online and and hopefully and then they can do it you know at 11 p.m if they feel like it you know right. whenever at their convenience yeah, right. that they're 
there are limitations, right? But I think that there's a fundamental shift in terms of people's appreciation for the outdoors and working outdoors and working with their hands that I don't think is going to be going away anytime soon as well. I think people suddenly realize that there's tremendous value, you know, for the soul in working and being outdoors. And I think this is a shift that will be, even when we get the pandemic licked in behind us, that we're going to be seeing uh, continued high interest in outdoor equipment like ours and, and other, other right. pastimes. For sure. And this, I'm sure it's not unique just for, for you guys as well. I'm hearing similar things from other other folks that, you know, just as an industry perspective, everyone is having trouble keeping up with the with the demand. Yeah. Well, and the other thing that's happening at the same time, and Brian can speak a little bit about it too, um, is the supply chains have, I mean, not just been so much disrupted as in some places co completely collapsed. Right. So uh, the steel, you try getting steel right now. I remember about a month ago, we needed to order, to get some particular steel in parts going that require a particular kind of steel off the mill. And I get this call from the guy who's doing the steel ordering and he says, I managed to find some in Florida. It's two and a half times our normal price. Should I take it? Because if I don't, if we don't get it right now, we're not going to get it. And he's like, right. We'll take wow. it, you know. Yeah, right. When you're when you're literally almost elbowing people out of the way for steel, <laughs> it's 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 not a normal world, right? And and so our suppliers are, are, are they're feeling it too because we do have to count on some suppliers to make stuff like plastic things we don't do when we we don't we're not a foundry we don't pour we don't cast band wheels. But they have, our suppliers have suppliers, and those are disrupted, and so you're waiting. Yeah, and it's not just the sawmill industry yeah. that's, a, that's experienced this surge. Lots of parallel industries, farming, are the same, same mm -hmm. they're in the same position sure. we're at. So we're, every, everyone's competing. Um, you know, yeah. we, we've got lead times right now on the HD 36, where we're 12 to 16 weeks out. Sure. Um, and we're doing our best, like to the best of our ability, that is when we make your order, that's when it's gonna ship. But we're relying on our vendors. Our vendors are relying, relying on their vendors. Um, you know, the Do you continue to try to find new vendors and things like that too? I mean, you're, you're, it sounds like you're constantly uh, hitting the road trying to find somebody to fulfill what you need, right? Well, actually, so we don't extrude aluminum, as you can imagine. So we've got partners who do that. And we were looking for a new extruder. And you talk, you call new uh, to us new suppliers, extruder partners. And they said, we're not taking on new clients right now. We're not going to take on new clients till 2023. <laughs> You're on the phone saying, what? <laughs> you know? it's, right. It's, I've never seen anything like this. I've been in this game for a long time. This is totally unprecedented. Sure. It's quite something. Yeah. But you know, we're not the only we're not the only ones who are experiencing this. Well, Brian, I think you just ordered a new snowmobile, new sled for delivery next year. You know, it's wow. It, so it's not just Norwood sawmills or just sawmills. It's any kind of outdoor thing, a piece of equipment. Yeah. You know. Right. So we we do kind of uh, along that line, right? So your supply chain is is certainly. Uh, challenged at times, right? And and the phones are challenged at times. And and, and we see, you know, um, some some of our uh, group members they they get frustrated with with both of those. I guess the next part that comes in is, uh, what about the mills that come in and, and it's very piece milled? I mean, he, so I I got the L two, and certainly box eleven has become notorious, right? It's it's, you know, if, if you get the the L of twenty nine box eleven that is may come a month or two later right how are you handling that as far as packaging i i understand you're trying to get the mill to them as quickly as they can so they can start the build process and then finish up with that is that is that really the strategy there or is is it uh you know kind of a qa thing where you're like uh you know i don't know we we, we messed up parts or whatever i mean we see some of those things from time to time well, we're, we're doing our best to get the mill to the customer as quickly as they can so that they can get it assembled. 
Um, our goal is to follow up like box 11, like you said, the guards box, mm -hmm. is to follow up as quickly as we can so that we can keep their project flowing. We're not just trying to right. dump, dump as many boxes as we can on them and have them sit there with something that they still can't run. So there, there is a method to the madness where we're, we are trying to create a flow for them. Um, and, and we try to do it so that it makes it as easy as possible for the customer. So, you know, they can get that, that bulk of their shipment and then expect a, a package to be couriered to them as a follow-up. So, you know, the, the reality is it's our preference if we can send the whole thing out in one shot because um, sure. it's a nightmare for us to do back orders because we've got it's double, triple the work for us to do that and the cost. It's not like we're charging the customer more shipping to send him stuff later on, right? right. So we're from from a freight and and logistics and, and workload perspective, to to send things out in multiple shipments is not good business from our perspective. Mm -hmm. The only reason we're doing it is to help our customers. So we gotcha. could say, well, we'll hold everything back until we've got every little piece. But in our view, it's better to at least get people sawing or allow them to start their assembly process. So they're, they're not getting delayed. And mm -hmm. so, yes, something may trickle in later, um, but at least they can get their show on the road at least as quickly as possible. Sure. And and that's certainly what happened with me, right? I mean, so you know, when I was building, it was it was going through the process. I got everything leveled out, and it, you know, do you think you're setting the the right expectations when something's back ordered, or you know, are you communicating with that customer saying, "Hey, this is going to be, uh, you know, X number of weeks out. We know it's back ordered. We'll get it to you as soon as you can." That kind of thing. I mean, are you kind of managing that? Do you think pretty well? I think we are. I think with the vast majority of our customers. You know, we explain it when when we do the shipments, when we take the orders, and and let them know. I mean, the situation we're in, and I think, a, like I said, a, not all, but a majority of them, they understand it, and and we, they understand we're doing our best. Um, unfortunately, I think we're all suffering from COVID fatigue, and yeah, right. you're not just hearing it from Norwood; you're hearing it from this, from here and there and everywhere. And for some people, they just they just felt like they've heard enough, but yeah, unfortunately, that doesn't make the problem go away, and we're still doing our best to to manage through it. Sure. Yes, yeah. we do. so we do. We do communicate, or we tr and and could we communicate better? Sure, we could always get better. So let me just start with that. I mean, there's no question we can get better. We are juggling a high volume of transactions and activity right now, but could we get better? Absolutely. <clears throat> But when we do communicate with a customer to say, for example, the box 11, which had been quite a challenge for quite a long time. And we say, okay, that should be going out in two weeks. And based on what our supplier says, bear in mind, we do not do roto molding of plastic, right? We're, right. That's a special, right. plastic people do plastic, right? Um, when our supplier says to us, well, we'll have that shipment to you of guards in a week so we think that we can start shipping it out in a week and a half or whatever are. and then they let us down and, and that makes it sound like i'm blaming them but they in turn can have supply problems sure. we're the ones at the end of the day with the egg on our face because we're the ones at the end of the day with the customer who's complaining rightfully so he's frustrated and um but it is what it is we can't we can't make guards. We can't make roto sure. plastic, right? right. Or whatever. And that kind of thing happens when we get tripped up. We've we've committed to, uh, to a customer a date, and then then the goalposts move on us. Sure. So sometimes where we really can't, and this is what we're doing right now, where we really can't say with definition because we're waiting on a particular part from a supplier, we actually will say to the customer, we're not going to give you any date right now because we don't we don't want to be in a situation where we let them down and we have to be honest if we actually can't be certain um or we don't know then that's what we will tell the customer it's not the news that they probably want to hear but that is the reality of the situation sure. yeah and i i think you know from obviously being an end customer you know i'd rather have 
that information up front, right? At least so I can make decisions. And Ashlyn, you had mentioned about the new website coming out and being revamped to be able to place online orders. Is that for like say consumable parts, you know, I need a, a replacement belt or maybe I want some more blades. I can just go straight there and, and place that order and have it shipped to me. And, and I guess along those lines, you're, you're not in your head, but will you have potential lead time issues with any of those parts hopefully listed there on the website as well? Um, Ray, you can talk a bit about the, the, the site it's, or the, the parts store. Yeah, for for spare parts and stuff, usually we're pretty we're pretty good on the lead times that they're they're in stock and ship relatively soon. So within a few days, you know, we try to ship parts orders out within 24 hours of receiving them. Um, again, you have these hiccups, especially right now at sure. the times where where things drag on. Um, the parts store, I I think you guys as owners are really going to appreciate it. Uh, it's something I'm really involved in. Is um, our new parts store is going to run kind of parallel to your manual that you use to assemble your mills. So when you looked at those illustrations and you, you know, where we always gave you that blow up of showed you all the parts and then the steps were on the other page of telling you what you're going to do with those parts, you're going to see those illustrations that you've seen in your manual. When you Perfect, because that was actually my next question, right? So a lot of other, you know, I, I'm working on a tractor or something along those lines and maybe I've misplaced my manual or that page or those part numbers I can't see. So owners will be able to, to pull up a, the schematic and the part list and be able to say, oh, this part I need. Yeah, absolutely. So it's going to be those bubbles that tell you it's item number 72. Well, you can click on bubble 72 and add it to your cart. So I, I'm really excited about it because yeah. you know, I'm really hands on with the sawmills and I think guys like yourself are just going to love it. So yeah. That's, that's, that's good news for sure. Yeah. Is there any other news we can expect coming in the future? Well, we've got the, so we have the new catalog, the new e-commerce platform. The parts store will be a little bit delayed from the new website, but it's coming up very soon. And then from um, equipment perspective, we are going to be bringing out what we call IntelliSet Computer Setworks. Pretty slick, very slick Computer Setworks. For the HD36 V2 and HD36 and the HD38, um, and the and I love I love the new set works are going to be awesome. They're they're they've been uh, we've been working on them for quite some time, and and they'll, they're not too far off now. Um, but also one thing that we actually have been selling for a while is our, our power saw head. So the feed and the up and down um, is now wireless. So people have been receiving that new wireless version. And it's fantastic. I mean, I've used, I love the power feed and, uh, you know, the control of it. Um, but we always had the cable that we, you had to do cable management. Now we've gotten rid of that cable. So it's the same pendant, the same great feel, um, but without the wires. So it's, it's, that's it's fantastic. Just, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it is really nice. And the set works is going to even take it to the next level. So you're literally, you'll have a wireless computer in your hand which allows you to control that set works, which I know guys are going to love it. I mean, it just lets you be wherever you need to be when you're milling. And sometimes that optimum spot of being at the back of the mill running it, depending on the direction of the wind, quickly doesn't become the optimum spot. So right. it's nice to stop out of there and need a little bit less sawdust in a day. So I think guys are going to love it. That is uh that's that's really cool. I, I just had a picture of like somebody just sitting on the couch, right? And just uh, operating the mill. <laughs> well, hopefully they don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's funny. I appreciate you guys, you know, being honest with us. And and I know some of those were questions you didn't want to answer and you didn't really want to hear. But you know, we hear these things all the time on the on the group, and we try to, you know, we have a lot of really good members that are there that. Um, you know, try to give the, the, the right answer. And oftentimes by talking to you guys, they get that answer, right? So they call in on the phone and they, they relay that information as well as we do. We do the same thing when we can. Um, we do see the complaint, you know, from time to time. And, and there are those that, um, you know, have had legitimate, you know, issues along the way. And we try to, you know, encourage them that that's, uh, you know, be patient with you. It's a really good product. And, and, and I'm, a, I'm, I can say I'm a proud Norwood owner. I mean, it's a really good sawmill and, and I appreciate the work you guys have, have put into that for sure. Um, 
but uh, certainly appreciate your time uh, today going through those things and, and excited about the new sawmills you're releasing. That's uh, that's really good news too. Well, listen, you know, appreciate your time and uh, and all the Norwood owners out there. Um, the the reason we do this, um, it's it's pretty darn impressive what everybody does with those machines and you know what they build with the wood that they're milling. So that's why we're here. Um, I, I think this is. This has been an, a, a challenging time for the world, for everybody, uh, emotionally and psychologically, uh, and, and for a lot of people from a dollars and cents way, you know, some people have been really put there to their knees uh, because of what's happening in the last year. Um, it's been challenging, but darn, I, I have to say, you know, I'm, I'm sure as hell proud of, of the team that we got here. They've been working real hard in some real adverse conditions. And, by and large, we're getting it done. It's we're just getting you know getting hammered uh, from from a few perspectives. Sure. But um, and really excited that even in the midst of this chaos, it, it, we're bringing out these these new machines and new equipment and new web platform and all of that sort of thing. So uh, you know a lot to a lot to be proud of and a lot to look forward to. And let's hope that. Uh, it's smoother sailing, um, you know, in the, the latter part of this year and into next year as things settle down. So, and we appreciate yeah, that owners like themselves, like the Norwood community is a really self-serving community. Like, yeah. I mean, with the new social platform, with Facebook and everything, people are reaching out for help. A lot of the times, we don't have to help them because mm -hmm. owners like yourself have uh, solved that solution before we can even get to it. Mm -hmm. So. I mean, that's the great thing about sawmill owners is they seem more than willing to share their knowledge with each other. Um, and what's better than a fellow Sawyer telling you, oh, no, don't do it that way. Do it this way. <laughs> right. You know, right. It's, it's great with ambassadors of a product like yourself that, you know, you may have had a bad experience because your guards were late. But, you you know, when, when, when fellows like such as yourself step up and say, hey, don't worry, you're going to get it and no one's going to stand behind your product. I mean, we really appreciate that's right. that. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Thank you both. Well, thank you so much. We we appreciated you uh, getting us on here and allowing us, uh, you know, uh, chat and being able to communicate things back and forth. And hopefully, we can do it at some point in the future as well. Yeah, it'd be fun. Great. Awesome. Yeah, for thank sure. You. All right. Take thank care. you. And have a good evening. Bye. Now. Bye. Take care.